Welcome fellow fish lovers to Sax Tanks, Crazy Aquarium Guy. So instead of being out partying and ruining my mood, I've been inside and working on my aquariums, trying to get them better. My goal for 2018 is to have my 14 aquariums and be completely satisfied with all of them. And that may sound easy to some of you, but that's pretty hard when you have low-tech planted aquariums. You need to keep up on them, especially the turtle tank. They ruin every scape I make. But in this video, I'm gonna work on some of my aquariums and I had a camera with me, so come on, hang out with me, stay tuned. Very grateful that you're spending your time on my channel. Super grateful. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Miss Sunshine is in it. My cute vodka puffer. Cute. She's big girl. But she's very cute in this one. So, enjoy fish lovers. Stay tuned. So this tank looks awesome, right? I started out with a lot of crypto corn because they grow slow but I was a little bit too generous where I placed them so I'm gonna show you what I mean this portion got maybe I think I started out with like 15 crypto corns and they're pretty expensive so but I didn't plan ahead I just went for it and now this, this is an Usteriana and Undulata. Just weird for me when I'm Swedish to pronounce the Latin names with an English accent. It's actually closer to Swedish accent if you speak Latin. Anyway. Um, uh, so I'm gonna pull out some, this is just Microsorum. I showed you in the last swim tails that I pulled them out. This is the ones that break loose themselves. I want to take them out so they don't get attached to my cryptocorn plants. But what I wanted to show you was that I planted cryptocorn Becky pet key. And we have actually got a lot of it in there. See if I can turn a oh, too much glare. Maybe down. So in there, all the way, and here you can see underneath the bigger cryptocorns, we have another cryptocorn that doesn't grow very tall. It's the same as this one, but this one looks bad now because it melted back since I moved it from this tank. But if you watched it in this tank looks super good looks like this and I want it as a foreground plant in the Fajaca tank because this crypto corn only gets to about this tall and pretty wide and really good looking in my opinion one of the best looking crypto corns so and it grows a lot faster than Parva and other small crypto corns and I also put in some Cryptocorn Spiralis, some Spiralis and they are in the back way in the back in there and they're not getting any, any light because I have a big Microsorum so I'm gonna take out these they're gonna melt back when you plant them in another tag so that's depressing but in here they're not gonna get light so you can might as well take them out it's too dense I mean, it's a waste of expensive plants to have it like this because these ones will grow thicker and fill these holes out. So I don't know what I was thinking. Same thing with this one. This is actually <laughs> Cryptocorn Venti Green was sold as that. And it looks just like the Aponogetifolia Cryptocorn. That doesn't get much light because the Venti is growing super tall. And this is five plants. In a space like this also really stupid of me but you know you live to learn here I've been spreading out small 
uh, Venti Red and Tropica Cryptocorn Red. It's a mix. But another problem is that the <laughs> Yellow Labs they dig up all the sand and put it in the front of the tank. So you see it's deep here and in the back it's you can see the glass. They're a bit scared now because I clean this spot to film with this one. And if you got it don't have a one of these ones, you should get it. You can get them on eBay for nothing. Like ten dollars. And you can also have a mag float like I do. But look what I did with the mag float. Those scratches can't do anything about them. So be careful with sand because you you make the mistake and you can't go back from it. I have more scratches. This one is also a scratch. And I hate that that it's my own fault because I'm lazy. So this one for the top half up here it's okay. And down here use this one. This is the best glass cleaning product I have in my fish room. I use this every day. Oh, oh well. Oh, in there you can also see a Becky T. Pet key. Right there. So it's crammed in between these other bigger cryptocorns. So I'm gonna pick those out and we're gonna plant them in the Fahaka tank. But the Fahaka tank is so deep that I can't reach the bottom without going into the tank so that's gonna be hard so I need to at least drain it and then use something to reach down it's really hard but <laughs> they will look awesome in the foreground and help with the algae problem and maybe I move the spiralis um, closer to the glass I don't know if you wanna see it I usually talk about it and then film the next bit here I have them. Do you want to see me just dig up plants? Maybe I filmed this one. We'll see. So I'm a light nerd. So I wanted to show you when I open up the whole thing. Can might as well show you. This I grow my as this is my stash of water letters, so I never run out. And I have to take it out and throw it in a giant ram's horn tub once in a while. This plant was sold to me as an aquarium plant when I did my first Patreon video and visited four fish stores. But I knew it was an aquarium plant but uh, the Shane stores, they do that. They sell you regular plants. Just put them underneath the water and they will survive like that for a week or two. But these were floating up, floating up, floating up, so I put them in here and now it's a couple of months later and it's obviously not an aquarium plant. We also have this weird moss, looks like coral or something, cool. But I was going to tell you that eventually I will get another Arcadia or another Fluel and put here. <laughs> super unnecessary but <laughs> so it will take a while but uh, this aquarium came with two of these so I have one of these extra and I'm not gonna use it myself so if you're watching this video and live in Sweden and if you pay the shipping or come and get it you can get one of these for free from me so I give away something because I don't need it. I'm gonna change this out as well. And when I do that, I'm gonna give away this one too. So it's two T8s. And as you can see, the tank is. Ah, uh, what is it? <laughs> Early in the morning, guys. Five feet long. So it's for a five feet tank. So pretty standard. And it's two Aquastar, Sylvania Aquastar lights, 10,000 Kelvin, the same as I have on the rainbow tank now. 
So if someone wants to get it, you can have it. But I realized I couldn't show you when I dig into the plant, so I'm going to do that off camera. Because I need to stand in front of this tank to reach down to the bottom. I can't stand on the side and, you know, you have to be on the side if you're going to get a good shot. And I can't do it. Because I can't reach that far. This is a tall tank as well. I really like tall tanks. You've seen that. But it's hard when you... got to maintain that. <laughs> so, see in a little bit guys. So now we have a lot of debris in the water of course. And this, is, this is what I call a big microsorum. Turn the lights down a little bit. So I turned it upside against the back instead. So it looks like I ruined it. I actually had three Spiralis cryptocorn. This is what is left of it because it was, wasn't getting enough light. Still, ha still have a little bit piece of Becky T. And of course a lot of this stuff that go into the snails. That's how I showed you. Pick those off your java ferns. The small new plants on top of the leaves, otherwise you're not going to get big thick leaves like this. You get big thick leaves, but they look like this. Because these plants eat all the nutrients from the leaves. So this is going to fill back in. And then, I don't know, this is going to get too big for this tank eventually. And I can't buy more aquariums. But, what we wanted to see was the Becky that I talked about. So you could barely see them in here. This is small cryptocorn, but look at the root system. They were really dug down. Four. And if I buy these, they would cost me about $10 each. And they would be half as big and not have this root system on it. And I got four now. So I need to do that a lot more. <laughs> Be patient and uh, take my own plants to new new aquariums instead of just buying things all the time. I'm running low on stash, guys, so need to think ahead a bit more. But next is planting them in the Faka tank. I will show you that, even though it's gonna be super hard to plant them. And we're gonna come back to this tank when it's cleared up. I think it looks cool with the jar fern pointed like that instead so I'm down on my knees looking at the Fahaka tank she's upset right now because I turned on the lights it's almost 1 p.m. but the lights come on at 4 p.m. So she's gonna be a little bit upset, but we need to work on this tank. You can see the new growth since I used EC Carbo and lowered the light to eight hours a day. I said it before, but I can say it again. It's my own fault. Look at the background. 12 hours a day and 90 watts of quality LED. I mean, what do you expect? And this old piece of driftwood that I kept for really long with the new BS was 10 times as big on this one and I put it in a turtle tank and you know what turtles do with plants they hate them and they destroy everything that even come close to call, calling themselves selves plants and this is the one that I had in the goldfish it's a microsorum trident I didn't talk about when I put it in at least I don't think so it's actually on a piece of driftwood with a suction cup behind it, so you can stick it to the glass. But in this tank, the current is too strong, so it fell down like 10 times, so I gave up. You can see here, it's almost like an onion. This is a Ponogetifol, no, sorry. A Ponogeton Bolivianus. Five of those. One of them has grown pretty big. But they're not shooting out. You can see this is this is one, 
two, and behind it three, four, uprooted, five, almost uprooted. And in the goldfish tank they grew like crazy, but not in this tank. And I don't know why, so I'm gonna, I really need to plant them again, so a big water change and add some more crushed coral sand will help this. Oh, I don't think I have crushed coral sand. I'm gonna use cichlid sand. I use crushed coral sand with goldfish, Africans, guppies, and the faca to buffer. And the endlers, of course. They love it. Crushed coral sand. Doesn't look great, but it looks more natural, in my opinion. But this is what a faca does. He leaves crap all over the floor. It looks like World War II gonna have to live with that but at least I can cover it with some plants so this water change is gonna take a long while this is a three feet tank almost so um, what else can I talk about yeah uh, I put in I haven't talked about it in a while I think I put in 25 of my best black rose shrimp in here but black rose shrimp throw out Red ones, red relies, as bloody reds, red relies, blue relies, blue velvets, yellows, and brown, unfortunately. <laughs> and I've actually seen really nice looking uh, blue dreams and bloody reds, so they're thriving in this huge piece of Java fur. And I want thousands of them, and when there are thousands of them, you're always gonna see some of them on top of the java farm. So that was my plan. I always wanted to have a 175 gallon or 200 gallon and put in shrimp with the super big fish that doesn't gonna care about the shrimp. That isn't gonna care about shrimp because it's so big. And of course we have albino brisselos plecos. Two of them. I tried to buy one male one female. They're growing and doing good. And a big cave that reaches two feet inside of the pile so they can go to hide because he's mean sometimes I mean he actually ate the discus that was in here but the discus would have died anyway because it had been starving itself for months but he ate it when he didn't get food for four days so and also I hidden a pleco cave in there so if they get big enough I get a bunch of babies I love to have a big tank and bunch of babies all the time with baby plecos so we're gonna wait probably 45 minutes an hour and then we come back and plant the crypto corn I think I want them here in the front so I'm not saying that I'm scared to go in here with my hands but she has been acting A little bit weird kind of she loves what it changes but she's been acting weird kind of defensive of the tank like when she laid eggs she also acted like this so I'm gonna feed her some food because she always calms down a lot if she gets something in her belly yep I'm gonna go in here and fix your tank up Yep, do you want some food? I'm gonna get some food. Giant ram's horn snails is on the menu. So this is enough to not stress her too much and still put in sand and plant the plants a lot easier. But we're gonna go up close. Tank doesn't look good up close, I know. But if you wanna see what I'm doing, we need to do that. Now I think she will stay put because she realized that I was going into the tank. So I'm just gonna fill out some with some more sand. Come on. Maybe a bit taller. Like this. Sorry. So I've stopped the water change now. And I'm gonna pick up those giant ram's horns. 
And I have a step stool and the plants are on top of the tank and right here I got my sand. So we're gonna get started. I need my tweezers as well. But I actually need to buy those super long tweezers or plant what do you call it? I know that you can buy some fork looking things to plant in the deep aquariums. I need to buy one of those. Leave me a link in the description from eBay if you know a good one that's really long. That would help me a lot. Thank you so much for that in advance. So I have tricks for putting in sand that's a lot better than I do now. You can feel, oh sorry, sorry about the noise. You can fill a regular soda bottle and then fill it with the tank water. Fill it up with sand, fill it up with tank water and then put it in upside down really close to the substrate. That is the best way not to stir up anything. Why didn't I show you that in this video instead of just talking about it? I don't know, I forgot, sorry. So we can just get a little more depth and cover these ugly things. Even, even though this isn't removing algae that grows on the part of the leftover on the bottom, it does make it look nicer temporarily. That's good enough for me for now. <laughs> and it shades the light, so the algae doesn't get any worse at least. I'm going to take out those giant ram swarms. <laughs> I was very generous to you, Miss Sunshine. Why do you always work against me when I do videos? You cute little thing. A lot of my subscribers must think it seems boring to have a vodka. And I really understand why you would think that. But I can promise you, it's not boring at all. It's easily the most enjoyable fish I ever kept. So, hopefully I wasn't in the picture while I'm doing stuff. So we're gonna spread these out. So this is a really good start. It looks super healthy. Hopefully it will shoot out like crazy. I should pick these out when I can. So when I feed her small crayfish, she eats the whole thing. Start at the back, as we people do. It's the most delicious part of a uh, lobster or a crayfish. And then she eats whole, the whole thing, all the way through. But when I give her big ones, females with broad back, she's not doing that. She eats the back and then she stops, spit it out and go around and eat the claws. <laughs> so she's getting picky. She knows I'm gonna feed her again. She'll, she, she'll happily wait for better parts. She's not gonna slum it down and eat the head of a crayfish, why would she? Right? Okay, look underneath this one. So, you can see a lot of debris when I do this. Now you can see more crayfish leftovers. But it's okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep the water coming down and do a bigger water change than even bigger than this when I planted the crypto crop. 
Just gonna add a tiny bit of sand. So it's so I really like having extra bags of substrate at home. What if you get people over that don't understand that I'm an awesome fish keeper? They just judge me on this tank alone. I can just cover it up for the night. I'm just kidding, I don't care what people think. Okay, of course don't leave, leave them weighed down by the sand. I really hope, this is five and I bought five for the goldfish tank and you have seen that. I thought these ones were gonna grow like that, but apparently not. If they had, I wouldn't have algae problems. They grow super fast for me in the goldfish tank. But enough out of that, now we're gonna plant the cryptocorn. And uh, sometimes when it's really long roots like this, you can peel them off. So it's easy, easier to plant and the pahaka won't have a strain to pull it out. It feels like it. Oh, okay. We'll say that crushed coral is a lot heavier than regular cichlid sand. I don't know, I didn't even plan how to do this. But it would look cool if it's in front of the wall. I realize that now. It would also be cool to have a little area with the big one here. Because this one is going to grow super tall. I don't know. Should plan ahead more. Never do that. You know why I never do that? I just went for it. I just go for it. What do you say? Because otherwise I won't get it done at all. I'm really a uh, everything or nothing person. A lot of fun to live with and hang out with. But in the long run, yes, I'm pretty selfish. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Nothing. Just describing my lovely personality to you guys. Being honest. It's easy to be honest to the whole world on YouTube. So, four of them. And they're gonna grow three times or twice as tall at least. And if these ones grow like they did in the goldfish tank, they're gonna be like this in a big spiral. So that's why they come out a little bit. But we still have the whole front area uh, free from plants. That is because the pahaka is going to continue growing. And you can't build a tank for a pahaka and then do what I always do. Keep them heavily planted so she can't move around. Here, you see suction cup? I'm just going to place this right here. This is my only microstorm trident, and it is growing super slow. I usually grow java ferns like king. Not this time, but that one came in really small, but still. I think I moved it too much. Same as with Anubius. Plant them and forget about them. Anubius cryptocorn and Java her. Don't move them. So hopefully that was, if not a lot of fun, at least interesting to hang out unedited a little bit more. This is gonna look cool. I'm gonna change water to about here. 
as I do every week. Sometimes I do that, fill it up, and do it again. People always ask about all my aquariums. What is your secret to clear water? Big water changes. Often and many of them. Like I said, two in a row. I don't care about nitrites or nitrates. It's not... I mean, I guess you can save money and look at test strips and don't change if you don't need to. But still, the water will be clear, clearer, more clear, if you do big water changes. And I always want my tanks to look crystal clear. So I'm not... The fish doesn't require my big water changes. I mean, some of them do. I think the yellow lab tank with 50 yellow labs and 20 tiger barbs really needs 80% once a week. But I mean, in this case, it's just to have a clear water. So the video is getting too long. We will finish off the video by feeding the Fahaka smaller ram's horn snails when she's calmed down. So we're going to wait a few hours for that. But just a second for you guys. See you in the next bit, guys. If you're still here, thanks a lot for the patience. Now she will eat for sure. I can see that on her behavior. She wants to know what I have in my hands. And that is appropriate sized ram's horn snails, giant ram's horn snails. So we're gonna lower the camera a bit. Beautiful fish. Look how much better it looks without the top glass on. I wish I can have it like this every time. A lot brighter. Mm. Okay, I think I will back up a little bit. She catches them in mid water sometimes. That's why I don't want to. That's why I don't want to go too close. See this? See how strong their beaks are if they really want to. I mean, one of these snails, this is against steel. I'm gonna lower the camera a bit so we can get an up close when she eats. Water is pretty clear now. Maybe it was more clear all the time. Just that damn glass. Don't worry, you're gonna get more. She looks for it. There we go. I bought these snails to breed them because it's hard for me to get any snails really that breeds fast in uh, fresh water. And they were really <laughs> expensive when I bought them. So I'm so glad that she loves them and I can breed them now. Another one, right? I do not dare to feed her by hand.
she doesn't like when they get stuck to her teeth. <laughs> we can understand that, right? We can understand that, right? And we eat ribs or something. Yep, that went fast. I have more. Since she was a good girl when I was planting. She's just so spoiled. I mean, she has, she has actually eaten thicker seafood, uh, but I can't keep uh, starving her like that because I have other fish in the tank and, we'll, and she will eat those before she waits for me to feed her. That's why I always feed her a lot, otherwise you could just starve them for two weeks. No problem. I mean, when they're this big, it's no problem. Don't do it that with your puffers until they are almost fully grown. Snack time. And she gets a lot of vitamins from these ones. Because these are the ones that I feed rapashi, uh, mix up krill, turtle food. So a lot of calcium. So it's the best way to feed your puffer to have another tank or a tub and breed something. I would like to breed more actually food for this one. She is a beauty. But we're gonna say good night now. I waited pretty late to do this. So all of the other tanks are dark. You wanna say goodbye? Miss Sunshine? So thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you watched all of it. I usually have feeding the fahaka at the end, because a lot of people wants, wants to see monster fish eat uh, live stuff, and that is not what I want to do with my channel. So that is one of the reasons why I usually feed the fahaka, and don't I don't feed the dragon puffer at all on camera. But I usually feed the Faka at the end because my true subscribers that watch my videos all the way through can get the good stuff. Nothing more. So thanks a lot guys and as usual it makes a really big difference when you share my videos and make make a bunch of comments and of course like the video or dislike the video I mean if you dislike the video you should dislike the video see you in the next one guys I have more projects in mind actually so it's gonna be a lot of fun for the next couple of weeks Miss Sunshine says says Goodbye.